Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today we're going to talk about the Omicron variant. I'm going to start by saying there's still a lot we don't know, and data is coming in slowly and steadily as we learn more about the Omicron variant of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The recent Thanksgiving weekend was a bit overshadowed that there was a newly identified COVID-19 variant of concern that's been called Omicron. It was first detected in South Africa, but that does not necessarily mean that that's where it started. That's simply the country with good surveillance capacities to test for variants effectively. The Omicron variant is already in the United States. The first detected case was a few days ago, but I assume that it's already been circulating in the U.S. for even longer than that. And thankfully, the person with COVID from the Omicron variant had mild symptoms and is recovering quickly. Furthermore, the very latest data that we have from South Africa has shown that most people infected with Omicron so far have relatively mild symptoms and tend to be younger adults. In South Africa, the people that are being hospitalized still remain the ones that are not vaccinated. But it's still too early to make the blanket statement that Omicron causes less severe disease in most vaccinated people. I hope that this is the case, but we just don't know yet. And from an evolutionary standpoint, it would make sense that mutations in the virus that cause it to be more infectious but less deadly to human hosts will become the dominant strains over time because the virus needs to continue to infect human hosts to continue to replicate and survive. If it kills the host it infects, it's less likely to be able to infect others. As I've mentioned before, variants are common in any respiratory virus and SARS-CoV-2 is no different. Variants come and go until one, like Delta, becomes the dominant strain because it has something about it that makes it more able to infect others more effectively. The Delta variant was more transmissible than the others. We're still waiting to see if Omicron will fade away and Delta will remain the dominant strain or if Omicron will take over. Because remember that there have been other prior variants of concern, such as Beta and Mu, for example, that had the ability to partially evade the body's immune defenses but they never became a serious threat to the world because they did not transmit from one person to another very easily. But the concern with Omicron arose when it was discovered that this variant had even more mutations and included many of the mutations found in other strains that have made them more transmissible and more antibody resistant. Remember that the spike protein is the chief target of antibodies that the immune system produces to fight a COVID-19 infection. And so having so many mutations raises concerns that Omicron spike protein might be able to evade antibodies produced by either previous infection or vaccination. But knowing about these mutations does not necessarily translate to a more severe infection in the real world. We just have to wait a bit longer to see how this plays out as more people contract COVID from the Omicron variant. At this point, we just don't know how effective the vaccines or natural immunity from a previous COVID infection are to this variant. My best guess is that the vaccines or natural immunity may have a decreased effectiveness, but it's just not clear how decreased that will be. And it doesn't mean that vaccines don't work at all. But it is interesting to note that Moderna, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, and AstraZeneca are all poised to develop boosters to target new variants including ones like Omicron. These vaccine developers knew all along that at some point there would be a variant that would likely be able to more effectively evade the vaccine protection. COVID-19 cases have started to slowly creep back up again, and in about a week we'll know how the Thanksgiving holiday gatherings and travel have contributed. And then a week after that, we'll see how hospitalization rates are affected by this. But scientists and vaccine developers still have hope that even if a variant like Omicron can evade the first line of defense from the vaccine, which is antibody production, there will still be protection that it cannot avoid from the second line of defense from T cells that are also produced by the vaccine. This is an answer that will be coming in the next few weeks. The big picture that I continue to take away from this is seeing that there's still such a discrepancy between rich and poor countries and their ability to vaccinate their citizens. 
While we know that vaccinations do not eliminate the possibility of contracting COVID, we do know, based on a recent article published in The Lancet at the end of October, that vaccinations do lessen the risk of a COVID infection, but doesn't eliminate it completely. But when someone that's vaccinated gets COVID, they clear the virus more quickly. And both of these contribute to less virus circulating. And when there's less virus circulating, there's less chance for mutations to develop. So countries with no vaccines are not able to curb the spread of COVID in any meaningful way and cannot protect their most vulnerable citizens. So as I continue to say, if you're not vaccinated, please get vaccinated. And if you're fully vaccinated, but are due for a booster soon, you might wait just a week or two longer to see how the Omicron variant responds to the current vaccines. Because if it's able to evade them easily, we'll see vaccine developers develop a booster that can fight this new variant and possibly others in the future. And we've been told that this should take a few months to develop. Thanks for joining me.